Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning to you, FCC, our online faith family, and to all of you who are watching from wherever you're watching from. Good Sunday to you, and welcome to church. We've made it to the fifth Sunday in the month of November, and that's a blessing all by itself. Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving holiday and a good time with your family as best as we could under the circumstances. And uh, we know we certainly had a good time. We have a lot to be thankful for, even in the midst of this global pandemic. Amen. Today we have a lot to cover, so we want to get right into the word as quickly as we can as we have a special guest minister today, our very own Pastor Samantha Kuros. Uh, before we go there, I want to mention that last week we talked about the global reset versus the kingdom difference. Amen. If you haven't seen that message, I want to encourage you to take a look at it on our YouTube page. It's there for your convenience and review. Today, we're going to be ministering on the family. A central theme at our church is the family. It's not something we do to be cute. It is, it is the center of all that we do at Faith Community Church. We believe that God's original plan was to colonize the earth, to take over the earth one godly family at a time. That's Genesis 1.28. And because Satan knows that, he has done an awesome job of, he's done a good job of trying to destroy the family. It becomes our job to focus on and align with God's original plan. And so that's what we do at our church. We talked about today about how many times we watch certain movies, maybe favorite movies of ours, multiple times. And each time we watch that movie, we notice something that we did not see the first time. Well, that's sort of how the word works. You have to hear the word again and again and again because we don't get it the first time. Mark chapter 4 and verse 15 says, as soon as the word is sown, Satan comes immediately to take the word away. Amen. So we want to sow the word in the area of family. If you're part of FCC, we talk about family all the time because that that is the center of who we are. We're not trying to go and save the world. We're trying to save our families. And we believe that if we have healthy families, that it will eventually turn into a beautiful community of faith, hope, and love. Amen. So I want to ask you to grab your Bible and your notepad and prepare your hearts today to receive the word of the Lord. If you're believing for a husband, if you're believing for a wife, this is how you receive your husband or your wife. It's by receiving the word of God as we increase our capacity and our ability to understand and know who God is in this area husbands and wives are going to show up in our lives amen so if you'll grab your materials we'll be back in 10 seconds pastor Sam will be back in 10 seconds with the role of the husband and the role of the wife see you in just a moment <music> scripture we're going to be looking at um, is 1 Peter 3 verses 1 through 5 and then we're going to take a look at verse 7. You husbands live with your wives in an understanding way with great gentleness and tact and with an intelligent regard for the marriage relationship as with someone physically weaker since she is a woman. Show her honor and respect as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered or ineffective. Amen. So as you can see, today is a combination of things, so nobody feels left out, all right? But ladies first, right? Ladies first. So we just read a lot of good stuff in First Peter, and as you can see, these are instructions from the Lord on how to make this balance work, right? So I think we need to first let that sink in. These aren't like options, you know what I mean? I feel like the Lord understands how we as humans work, you know, and that we need guidance. And this is his way of telling us, hey, in order, if, if you want a successful marriage and you want things to work out in your favor and you want your prayers to be answered, this is how you need to order things in that partnership. Amen? Amen. All right, so, for my wives and future wives, we have to collectively 
accept the notion that when we get married, we have to submit the authority of our household to our husband, okay? There can't be two captains. There can't be two pilots. We have to fully allow our husband to lead our household, all right? We seem to struggle with that. I ain't going to lie. I'm one of them. Hello, my name is Samantha. I struggle with that, right? Um, I struggle a lot with that. And most of the time, it's out of fear, right? Something happens, it looks like we're going a little far to the left, and then I'm like, okay, I'm trying to be quiet, but I got to get us back on track. So the thing is, for those that are not married yet, if, if your partner is already showing characteristics and things that they're not going to be someone that's responsible and you feel like you're not going to be able to trust them to lead your family, he probably ain't the one, so. All right, he ain't the one. He ain't the one. Find another. Find another. And then for those that are married, you you kind of, now, now that you're in it, right, and you see that he's not doing what he needs to do, the word just told us what we need to do, right? We got to set the example, right? We can't take control. We can't overstep. We have to be quiet and lead a godly life. I had to whisper that TJ looking at me like, yeah. <laughs> Shut on up. Don't be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. So, we have, so we have to kind of set the example that we want them to follow in a way. So it's like leading from the back seat. You know what I mean? You kind of have to move first so that he sees, okay, well, she's acting like this, so maybe I need to do the same thing. Maybe I need to get on board with it. So for the men in this room, we're not mind readers. You know, we're, we're not mind readers. We don't know what you need or, or what your intentions are. So if you're acting irresponsibly, if you're not handling your business, if you're not taking care of your house like you're supposed to be, if you're not making the right decisions, for your household, then you put your partner in a position to pick up the slack. Does that make sense? That's how we end up with those reverse roles. You know, I don't necessarily want to drive boat. Or, you know, the ship, the plane, I don't want to do nothing. I don't even like driving, right? I'd rather ride in the passenger seat, right? But if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, I'm forced to take the wheel. It's like, hold, 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 hold up. You got to get this thing back on course, right? So when you're not doing what you're supposed to do as a husband, right, as the leader of the household, and you put your wife in a position where she has to leave, and that's not where she's supposed to be. Amen? Amen. 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 Lord. The Lord is, the Lord is speaking today. So back to our ladies. When these things happen, we, we spend so much time trying to convince our husbands, right, to do the right thing or to, to act in a certain way or to kick certain habits when the word tells us that all we need to do is set the example again, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To get them to do what we want to do. We don't have to yell and kick and scream and you know overtake and create this hostile environment as we act as the example and carry ourselves in a way of calm and gentleness. No nagging, don't go off the rails and all this stuff. And when that happens, uh, it's, you see how I'm jumping back and forth? It's, it's a give and take. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when we're acting like that, you know, the husbands have to step in and understand what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. right? A level of understanding. We just read that in First Peter, right? Mm -hmm. There has to be a certain level of understanding to understand your wife. Pay attention to her. Pay attention to what she's saying. Most of the time, she's telling you what she needs, what she wants, what she wants to see happen. Don't just blow her off, right? What you definitely the, don't want to respond to your wife in a resentful way. And we're about to talk about that. Let's let's go ahead and move to Colossians 3.19. All right, Colossians 3.19. Verse 19 says, Husbands, love your wives with an affectionate, sympathetic, mm -hmm. selfless love mm -hmm. that always seeks the best for them and do not be embittered or resentful towards them because of the responsibilities of the marriage. Mm -hmm. Right? So I just said, listen to your wife. Pay attention to it. Don't blow her off. You have to, there's just like a certain level of being that you have to operate in with your spouse that you can't operate in in the outside world. We understand. You know, men are men. We ain't going to be able to see you cry. You know, we ain't going to be able to know how you feel. You got to be all tough. Go to work and provide and do all these things. But when you get home, mm -hmm. 
all of that needs to fall away. Right. You need to be able to, to shed whatever that is you got to, to put on this hard shell. You got to be able to shed that so that your wife can see you. You know what I mean? And that you can see her, yeah. right? So love is, is not just a feeling, right? Like, right. I love you. I love you. Right. Like, we love each other. You know, love is not just a feeling. It's an action. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. It's, it's easy to just say I love you. Right. That's so easy. Mm -hmm. That's so easy to do. It takes a little bit of effort on your part to show it, yeah. right? And oftentimes, this role is put on the wife. Have y'all ever noticed that? Mm -hmm. It's up to the wife to do all the romance. It's up to the wife to set up the nice dinners and things and places where we go to celebrate our love, right? Mm -hmm. It's up to the wife to do something nice, set up something real fancy for Valentine's Day. That, that's not on us. It's not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. We take the road because we know what we want, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. We want chocolate cup strawberry, we're going to get some. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to have today. You know, we want to go get a massage for our anniversary. We've been getting one. That's what we want to do. Right? But that's on you guys. It's up to you guys to show how you feel about your wife. Right? Telling her you love her is not enough. Hold her hand. Show some physical affection. You'd be surprised. Especially, I feel like you see it more, that affection less generation and the older generations mm -hmm. to pass. Like, I don't know, since you hear me, I'm looking at you. Mm -hmm. Your dad, my granddad, he wasn't the most affectionate person. Yeah. True or false? True. Like, that's just, I don't know. I feel like his way of showing love was like, well, I paid the rent, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> like you, you, you know what I mean? Anybody else know any yeah. older yeah. gentlemen that yeah. feel that way? They don't know how to say you know, or show you that I love you. They don't just walk up to you, give you a hug. It wasn't until his last days mm -hmm. that I heard him tell my grandma, I love you. Yeah. That That's on the deathbed. So he must have meant it, mm -hmm. right? They just wasn't brought and taught. It, it wasn't, wasn't a thing. However, it. isn't it crazy how people brought up in the word don't get that? Like, it don't click for some reason. They skip that part. Y'all be skipping what you're going to skip, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> learn which one learn teach which one teach yeah. right choosing choosing what you want to receive but the word says that you have to be affectionate right yeah. affectionate that's a little hug and a little kissing right come yeah. sit with me don't watch a movie with me yeah. right don't be afraid to show a little PDA mm -hmm. ain't nothing wrong with that hold her hand buy her something that she likes mm -hmm. I ain't say something expensive mm -hmm. something that she likes Right? If you know she likes chocolate, mm -hmm. Walgreens always got to say that. Yeah. Chocolate covered stock, the, what's, what's the place with the chocolate? Edible arrangements. Mm -hmm. Got a thing. You know, I like smell goods. Bath and Body Works always got a sale. Yeah. Always. always. <laughs> On December 4th, those three week candles going to be $8, so make sure y'all yeah. go and get y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just a hint, throw that Come out there. That. You know, it doesn't have to be in this astronomical price range. Like, I feel like you think that they want something that they're not looking for. Mm -hmm. You have it made up in your mind what you think that they want. And then you say, oh, well, I can't really afford that. So you end up not getting anything at all. Mm -hmm. Or you're like, you know, I thought about getting you something, but where's the butt? <laughs> Why does it got to be a butt? Right? Let's just do it. You know, yeah. show your wife that you love and you appreciate her. That's it. I mean, because that changes the game. That changes everything. That's 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 enough for you, TJ. That'll change again. Yeah. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. <laughs> so it also says it also says. Uh, hold up, girl. Oh, hold up. <laughs> right. This this is this is the toast. This is the give and take. I'm coming back. I'm coming back around. Don't 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 shut up. But also in Colossians it said, don't be embittered or resentful. And also times what happens is. Husbands, and, and I do feel for it, husbands have this huge load to carry, if you carry, right? Mm -hmm. You have this huge load to carry, and it's easy to take a look at your partner and see that they don't have as large a load and feel some type of way. You know what I mean? But you shouldn't, right? Because they're supposed to be a balance. So if this is what you want to do. You want to take the lead. You want to do that. You can't be upset. 
with the other person for the responsibilities that you've chosen to take, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you feel like you gotta work, go out here and work 50, 11 jobs, don't come home mad at me. I ain't do it. I'm low mate. Come on, come on. I <laughs> so, all right. So, come on. <laughs> like, come on, preach Christmas. It's all good. I love it. I love it so much. But it's important to not see them as not carrying as much weight as you and, make, and let that make you feel some type of way, right? Because they're supposed to be that way, right? Right? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to want the best for your spouse, always. That's They're supposed right. to be this selfless kind of love. So you can't look at them right. and say, oh, well, I'm doing more than what you're doing. Because it's not the same scale. Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of scale. Yeah. Right? There's a whole lot of things that we do as wives that kind of, that little really balance out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's keep it going. Because cause, Dre on one over there. Let's, let's keep it going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's keep it going. And I want to go to Proverbs. I want to go to Proverbs, and we're going to read three of the Proverbs scriptures, Proverbs 21 and 9, Proverbs 21 and 19, and Proverbs 27, 15 through 16, and I'm just going to read them for you guys. Um, Proverbs 21 and 9 says, it's better to live alone in the corner of an attic with a quarrelsome wife and a lonely home, right? Proverbs 21 and 19. It's better to live alone in a desert than with a quarrelsome, complaining wife. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard? Mm -hmm. Proverbs 27, 15 through 16. A quarrelsome wife is as annoying as a constant dripping on a rainy day. Stopping her complaints is like trying to stop the wind or trying to hold something with greased hands. Look at the Lord. Look at the Lord. Shut up. <laughs> I don't know if y'all ever heard it said like that. My dad used to say it all the time. Shut up. Be quiet. Right? So here's the thing. We've already read that we don't have to say much. We shouldn't have to say much to get things to go the way that we need them to go. But for some reason, we can't seem to be quiet. And I'm saying we because of me. I know me. Right? It's difficult, but what you, I think, what, what we got to realize is nobody wants to live with that. Amen. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to live with that. Nobody wants to deal with somebody who wants to fuss and fight and argue all the time. It don't make nobody feel good. It don't make you feel good after you finish doing it. Right? And it doesn't make your husband feel good after y'all done got into it, because now y'all sitting here like, what now? You say this, I say that, what now? Where are we supposed to go from here? But you can't, it's like you, you can't always find something to complain about, right? Mm -hmm. You got to stop complaining and figure out how to make it work, figure out how to maneuver. We read in First Peter that we have to lead the way with the way that we act, right? We have to adapt to the way that our husbands are and what their being is. And if we do that, we don't have to sit there and complain all day. Right? We're smart enough to set it up to where we ain't got to say a word mm -hmm. in the things that we need to get done or get done. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm, about to, I'm super smart. Mm -hmm. I'm super smart. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what do they call it? Reverse psychology. Mm -hmm. You know, hit some of that. Don't, you don't have to, to scream and you, you hear it too often. You know, you hear it so often. I don't know a family or relationship that hasn't done a whole lot of fussing and fighting and arguing. Mm -hmm. Do y'all? Everyone on the scene, they averted uh, uh, getting right in the back side. Right? Anyway, who drank? Yeah. Oh, right. So, when it comes to this, because you, you've read in that, that last, that last um, Proverbs that we read, stopping her complaints is like trying to stop the wind. Mm -hmm. They ain't going to, okay, let me go to memory. Y'all ain't going to be able to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so y'all may have to come in on that and be like, look, I'm knocking out. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to respond, ain't it? Yeah. Because yeah. you. you cannot stop it. And I think as women, we don't realize that power that we have. We just go, 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 not even thinking that there is going to be nothing that they can say or do to stop us from being upset. It's just fuses blown, mm -hmm. literally. 
and that is what it is. So before you get upset, remember you gotta present a very calm and quiet spirit yeah. so that our husbands are, are won over by our behavior. So when you feel a rent coming on, because I know it's gonna come, you know, when you feel the rent coming on, you know, you had it up to here. You've been counting, you've been like, trying to get yourself together. There's, there's a decision that you have to make. All right, when you feel that coming on, because it's a feeling that overtakes you. All right, at first it starts up here, it's just a bunch of thoughts. Like, you know, he can't do it. Or he didn't think that. Or didn't I just call him? Or didn't we just talk about? Those questions start popping up in your mind, right? And then it starts to build up this rage. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah, she doesn't know what to talk about. The temperatures start to rise a little bit, and you have a decision to make. Do you want to banish your husband to the desert, because that's what it's going to be, or do you want your house to run smoothly, him to get with the program, everybody live married, maybe you get you some child stuff, child marriage at the end of the day? Because I know one thing about my husband, when he knows that he's messed up, and I don't call him on it, he be like, what can I, I got to do? I can't, I'm not going home in bed. I got to do something. He just came home with all kind of stuff. All because you took the opposite route. I could have, you know, laid, I could have did. <laughs> but I didn't. I was just like, I ain't going to miss a call at all. He be fine. He goes, man, man, listen. I got you, um. He got a whole bag full of stuff. <laughs> I got you. Um, you like these, right? You like these. Every time you cook it, there you go. You, know, you like those things like that. He come with it. So, ladies, you got to make a decision. Do you want to banish your husband to the desert, or do you want your household to get with the program? If you do that, like, you, you have to choose not to be mad. That's a literal decision that every human being can make. You don't think you can, because it's in you. you when you're mad, you, you're thinking, how can I choose not to be mad? You literally... Take a breath, take a look in the mirror, look at yourself, and be like, yeah. I'm saying that because I do this. Mm -hmm. I do it often, <laughs> right? And not, not just with my husband, in my everyday life. Mm -hmm. I would be very unproductive, and I wouldn't be as successful as I am if I walked around mad all the time. You know, so that's just a lesson for everybody. You have the choice. You have the ability to choose not to be mad. Yeah. As much as you think you don't, you have the choice. Make a decision to not be upset. Right. And you really will see how you're not. It's, it's usually just the devil messing with you anyway. Yeah. Yeah. True or false, you can be having a great day and all of a sudden something pop up in your head that may or may not have occurred mm -hmm. and now you upset. Yeah, right. And that's what they be talking about when they be trying to call us crazy. Like, but they didn't even that. But it could have. Right? <laughs> Anywho, these are general things. Make a decision, decide to be happy because it's best for everyone. Because mm -hmm. when you're mad, nobody's going to be able to contain you. Right? right? And you also have to think about what we're doing and the example that we're supposed to be setting. Right? With your kids. That's why we don't know how to act. Because our parents ain't know how to act. <laughs> right? With the fussing and the fighting and the arguing, not really understanding or paying attention to those that are looking at us, right? And they're thinking, this must be normal. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, mama, doing this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now you growing up, you were many, you were many me of the person that you watched. Yeah. And all they did was fuss and cuss and fight, but that's all you did. Mm -hmm. And our goal, the, the whole point of families is to recreate the kingdom in the earth. And we're doing the opposite. We're recreating a bunch of strife and confusion. And the only person that operates in that is the devil. Because the Lord knows. Amen. Amen. So let's move along, guys. Let's move along. All right. And here we go. My last point. We're going to talk about 1 Timothy 5, verse 8. 1 Timothy 5, verse 8. Got to go toast there, please. Yeah, 
All right, so 1 Timothy 5 and 8 tells us, if anyone fails to provide for his own, and especially for those of his own family, he has denied the faith by disregarding its precepts and is worse than an unbeliever who fulfills his obligations in these matters. Y'all hear me with that? Mm -hmm. So this, of course, is for my guys, because this is your job, right? If anyone fails to provide for his own family, especially for those of his own family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Y'all hear that? Mm-hmm. So luckily for the men in this room, we ain't got that problem. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I ain't never known, not damn one of y'all, not to be working. Mm-hmm. Even those that don't have families mm-hmm. or anybody necessarily to be quote unquote responsible for. Mm-hmm. We've been some working men. I applaud y'all. Kudos. Kudos. Kudos, PJ. Appreciate you holding us down. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. But it's important that we not only continue to represent this model, but to show those that are coming up, up under us what's supposed to be. Right? And also demonstrate to the women that we're raising, right? Because they're babies now, but they'll be women soon. Um, it's important to demonstrate to them what a head of household looks like. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Does that make sense? Because mm-hmm. your mama can't show you, even though your mom is supposed to teach you how to you know, grow up and become a, 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 a woman, she can't teach you how to be a head of household. Mm-hmm. Right? So mm-hmm. we look to our men to show our women what that looks like and what they should expect. Mm-hmm. So your sole responsibility as a man and head of household is to make sure your family's needs are met. Right, and I'm not talking just the basic necessities, housing, food, water, car, you guys have sick and all this stuff. Y'all know that that's your own responsibility, but you guys are also supposed to lead the household in faith, correct? In the word, right? You can't think just because you go to work, you can't drop the ball with the word, all right? It's up to you guys to lead in that manner because you're setting an example, correct? Hey man, welcome back, Faith Family. Listen, we're not out of message. Pastor Sam did an awesome job, but we are out of time today. So we'll have to stop for today. She'll be back with us next week. So I want to encourage you to listen to this message again and again. Let's receive the word of the Lord. And we're believing for signs, miracles, and wonders, confirming the word of God in our lives where family is concerned. Hey man, listen, this week we're believing God. We've got our faith out for a supernatural debt cancellation and supernatural increase. We must go for for today. I hope you have a great week in the Lord and we'll see everybody next Sunday. Receive your gift from the Papa. This day is a gift of us.